being black in Japan is mostly a good thing, I would have to say. One other thing I must say, prepare for any uh, health problems. Mm. Now, in my case, two years ago, I had a, uh, a transplant, stem oh. cell transplant. Okay. So I had a form of leukemia, oh. chronic leukemia. And so... ICS English Learning Center here in Musashi Kogane. Come on in. This area we have for adult students and some of our older students. We have classes right here in this area. And also on these sofas on Saturdays, we have champagne class and we have uh, food along with some drink and conversation. This is for the um, advanced students who don't really want to study with books, they just want to have a good time. We do that here on the weekends. Come on upstairs. On this floor, we have our classes for the young ones. So we take students from about age three and a half, and this is a Montessori-based system that we use. What we try to do for the young kids uh, who study English here, we try to get their level up to the same as if they had attended an international school. This is where we keep a lot of our things. Uh, Halloween. I was Aladdin last Halloween. Um, Christmas decorations. And then in the summertime, this area is used for our younger kids. We have a summer program. And for about maybe four, five, six students, age three, four, five, our young group, they have nap time here. And then on the other side, depending on how many people we have for our summer program, we might have classes here for some of the older students. So next door to our school, we have Musashi Kogane Clinic. Here at the clinic is where sometimes I need to do some translation for a patient uh, with one of the doctors or for some of the documents. I also uh, put this into English for some of them or read it in, read it for them. Okay, right now we're gonna go up to the top floor and then on the rooftop. On the rooftop is where we have some activities in the summertime for the kids and then also for our adult students, we have parties, so let's go on up. Okay, follow me. And so here, we have our tables for our summer school classes. We have lunches here. And then also, uh, we have some lunch and dinner here sometimes with the uh, older students, adult students. This is where we have our tiny house. So in the wintertime, and actually summertime too. This is air conditioned and heated. So we have a few things in here too. We got the grill over here. This is where I turn into the chef day. Let them have it with the barbecue and some jerk chicken. All right. All right, that's, uh, that's the end of the tour here. <laughs> We got lucky today. Today, my partner Kazumi is making lunch for us. Looks like she made us what? Um, oh, potato and bacon vegetable soup. Looks good. And some hot dogs. Yeah, this is always nice. Normally, if I'm lucky, I can get lunch every day. Um, that's depending on if we argue or not during the week. <laughs> So we've been to Las Vegas, Bangkok, New York, uh, because the, the students, they like to use their English. So what we try to do, we try to give them the real life experience. So we take these trips and the students are able to really have fun with their English and actually use it. Now a lot of them, uh, they've been overseas before, so it's nothing new, but it's a lot different when you go in a group. So. You know, we try to provide some education with fun. That's what that's about. And food, 
is always a good thing. You can never go wrong with food and drinks. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of The Melanated Files. My name is Ranzo and today we're joined by David Wright. We are in Musashi Kogane, right? That's and he's right. the director of ICS English Learning Center. He's been in Japan for a very, very long time and we will be getting into his story today. Okay, David, so tell us, like, why did you come to Japan and what do you do? I'm David, I'm from the US. I originally came to Japan in 1995 but I came to Asia in 1993 as part of the Yale China program. Uh, this is a program for graduate students and undergraduate students uh, from Yale. Uh, we went to uh, China, or in my case, Hong Kong, and I taught at the Chinese University of Hong Kong for two years. Okay, so why Japan? Yeah. Actually, I didn't have a plan. Okay. Um, I didn't think about Japan other than there used to be programs uh, in the U.S. showing NHK News. Okay. And as an afterthought, I thought, oh, that's a nice looking country. Maybe one day I'll, you know, I'll visit. But I didn't really think I would visit. Uh, what happened? How did it happen? I was walking. This is a, a couple days before graduation mm -hmm. or maybe a couple weeks uh, before graduation. Uh, from my graduate program. I was in the African-American African Studies program at okay. Yale. And so I was trying to figure out what I really wanted to do. I had already been accepted into the PhD program at University of California, okay. Berkeley. Okay. But I had been in education my whole <laughs> life. Uh, you know, actually from about sixth grade, I was in these after-school programs mm -hmm. and uh, during high school, I was in another program at a local uh, university, you know, trying to get the kids out of the hood, that type of things. Um, so I had been in education my whole life. I just needed a break. Yeah. And uh, even before I started my graduate program, I was working in education at a small private college in New York called Manhattanville College. And I was a um, ed, um, dean of admissions, Okay. Assistant, assistant dean of admissions, my area was uh, all of New York City and then some other parts of the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So I was a little burned out. I was trying to think about what I really wanted to do. Um, did I really want to go into another six years after just doing this two years? Um, so I happened to be walking across campus one day and I mm -hmm. saw a notice for something out of the corner of my eye and yeah. it said, uh, teach in China or something about China. And the meeting was that night. As a matter of fact, the meeting had already started. Okay. But I went to the room where it was held anyway, and it was, it was packed. I didn't know anything about it. It seemed like this is some very big, you know, it was a big deal, but I had no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. I tried to ask some questions at the end, but the line was so long. I figured, okay, I'll just come back. Uh, the guy who gave the... Um, the talk said, mm -hmm. we're at this office here if you ever need to talk. So the next day I visited that office, but I walked up to the door. I knocked on the door and nobody answered. Okay. So I walked away and as I was walking away, I hear somebody call out, hey, uh, did you just knock on the door? So I was about ready to give everything up. Mm -hmm. uh, but so I went in, um, make a long story short, after about five interviews later that you, I didn't know you had to go through all that. After about five interviews later, I was accepted into the program. And it turns out I was the first black person accepted into that program. Okay. And this is in 1993. You would think first black would already be done by now. Yeah. So we had a choice of either going to mainland China or Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to go to uh, China, okay. as you can imagine, especially back in the 90s. Uh, but to get the Hong Kong post was very competitive, I heard. So I was told not to expect to be chosen for that. Mm -hmm. But I was. Um, and so I taught at the Chinese University of Hong Kong for two years. Uh, that was in the English literature department. And also I taught a class in uh, American culture. Okay. While I was in Hong Kong, I traveled extensively all around Asia. Um, Japan was one of those places. Singapore, uh, where else? The Philippines, just about every place I could go. And it was during that time, I, I went to Japan two or three times 
It was nice. Uh, I can't lie. Uh, it was very you nice. Hong Kong? Oh, but Hong Kong. <laughs> you know, when people ask me about Hong Kong, I tell them it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Okay. Uh, it was, it was uh, adult Disneyland in one way, mm -hmm. but for black people, it was terrible. Oh, it, wow. It was terrible. Um, people always talk about, you know, in Japan, is there a race? No, in Japan, there's no problem. But in, in Hong Kong, I'll give you an example. Where you, I always hear people on your program talk about, nobody wants to sit next to me on the seat in Japan. That, that never happens, at least not to me. Mm -hmm. The problem, actually, it's the opposite problem. People always want to sit down next to you when you get some space. But in Hong Kong, that actually happens. Mm -hmm. And in one time, they, I was in the train, and I saw a mother holding her baby pointing at me from the other end of the carriage. And, the, and she's, I know what she was trying to you know, tell the child, like, it's a monkey over there. Oh, and snap. It, yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, this happened more than once. And one, I can remember one time uh, I was sitting in a Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant with a friend. Yeah. And um, we were just having a talk. It was a Filipino. There are a lot of Filipino maids in Hong Kong, mm. and they, their days off are on Sundays. So I think it was a group of us, and I was talking with them. All of a sudden, I hear, look out. <laughs> and I turn. A big, <laughs> a big thing of soda is thrown our way. Wow. Yes. Bam. And uh, so I, you know, jumped up, ran after whoever I thought it was, but, yeah. you know, I didn't really know, and ran out into the crowded mall. Those things happened all the time. Wow. So, but on the other hand, we used to party. Um, we used to party heavy. Okay. So there were a lot of financial institutions in Hong Kong. So a lot of the traders uh, would go to the clubs until 7 in the morning, leave, head straight off to their offices and, oh, wow. you know, work until whatever. So I had a good time, but at the same time, uh, it wasn't so great. Mm -hmm. But I decided uh, by taking all the trips to Japan that I'm going to come here mm -hmm. because I didn't want to go back immediately. I, I was having such a good time in Hong Kong. I really didn't want to go back to my, my program. In the U.S., so I said, "Well, maybe I work for a year in uh, Tokyo." Mm -hmm. So I sent off a lot of resumes to different colleges to see if maybe I could teach. That that they wanted a longer commitment okay. that, that I wasn't able to give. Mm -hmm. But somebody told me, you know, there's a, a company called Interact, and okay. you can, you know, you can. It was, teach. it was around back then. Yeah, okay. Interact was. Believe it or not, Interact was around back then. <laughs> Okay. And uh, I think everybody's been to Interact. <laughs> um, so I went there uh, yeah. for a year, and that was my introduction to Japanese society because, well, when they saw my resume and mm -hmm. they saw Yale on there, yeah. they immediately sent it to all their best clients. And so I was in, <laughs> I was in high demand. You know, they, you have your photograph and then, you, you know, your academic background. Mm -hmm. So I went to oof, all the top. Uh, Japanese companies to teach classes there. I think also, where did I teach? Um, Reuters Japan. Also, I taught at, oh, the Japanese, this, I didn't even know about it, mm -hmm. but there's the uh, big Japanese petroleum trading company. So all the oil that comes in from, especially Saudi Arabia. Okay. That building is gorgeous. Um, Sony, of course, it was, Big time back then. Mm. All, all the big companies. So okay. that's that was my first entree into Japanese culture and Japanese life. I couldn't speak the language at the time. Okay. Um, so it was a little bit difficult. I needed help if I, for example, I need to get my shirts cleaned. I would go to a cleaners and have to call my friend. Hey, can you tell them that I want starch or whatever and hand the phone over. So at that time, I, I thought, if I ever come back here again, I'm going to learn the language. So I, I was uh, in Japan, uh, sorry, in Tokyo for a year, mm -hmm. and then I went back for my PhD program. Okay. So I started Japanese lessons at Berkeley, which was the worst possible place to start. Uh, why, mm -hmm. you ask? It's because, one, we're on the West Coast, it's full of Asians. So in my class, there were basically four groups of people. You had the Sansei, not really Nisei, but Sansei. So their grandmother spoke Japanese to them. They were Japanese. Mm -hmm. 
the grandmother. So they had some practice with the language already. Mm -hmm. And then you had the Koreans. Koreans and, and the Japanese uh, grammar system is the exact same. Okay. So they had me on the grammar. And then the Chinese, well, Japan gets their writing system from China. So when it came to time for kanji tests, you know, <laughs> And then the fourth group would be the uh, otaku. Okay. And, and so they were deep into the manga and, and all these other things. And then there was me. Uh, <laughs> you were on the outskirts. Okay, okay. I was, I was out there on my own. Okay. Uh, so I, I slogged through my Japanese for the first two years. Mm -hmm. And this, once again, uh, by accident, mm -hmm. my teacher had known that I was interested and maybe doing a summer program in Japan, mm -hmm. because even at that time I was going back and forth to Japan for a few weeks during the summer. Okay. And um, I you said, got the bug. I, you got the bug. yeah, I, I got the bug. I got the bug. And, uh, you know, I knew some people, uh, women. And so, <laughs> and so I was, I was there yeah. uh, when I could, you know, whenever I could. So I asked, uh, I, I was trying to get into an academic program in Yokohama. It's for future scholars who in the future will probably be um, using Japanese mm -hmm. um, somehow academically. But I wasn't able to get into that program. It was too late. Okay. And they were full already. They said, maybe try again next year. Um, but my Japanese teacher knew about this because I had to go to her for some recommendations. Mm -hmm. And she comes to me one day, Lito-san, uh, you said you want to go to Japan, right? She's like, well, we have a opening for a graduate student mm -hmm. um, that nobody is filled yet. And if you want, I can maybe set you up for this program and you'll go to uh, Osaka. And you can study in Osaka, Osaka University of Foreign Languages, Osaka Gaida. And I said, yeah, okay. But she said, but there's one catch. I said, well, well what? She says, um, well, the deadline is in three days and you need three uh, letters of recommendation from three different, and then three different professors. And mm -hmm. then you need to write um, an essay about why you want to go. Then you need to provide something about academically uh, what your plan is. And then you need a full checkup uh, medical checkup, and we need records of all of your uh, immunizations since birth. And uh, <laughs> I said, is that all? And uh, <laughs> so, and we need your birth certificate. Okay. Now, at that time, I didn't know what a real birth certificate was. I had a certificate of birth where you have your, your baby feet on it and I was like, yeah, no problem. They're like, no, 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 this is not it. We need something official. Yeah. So I had to call back to my brother in my hometown. I need you to go into the city office, get this, and also get the uh, records for my immunizations. I think at that time they were still FedEx. So FedEx that out to me. I uh, went to different professors. They were like, okay, sure. Wrote some things up. And then next thing you know, uh, that next um, autumn, I was in Osaka. Oh, wow. So I started at Osaka Gaidai. Mm -hmm. um, this is, once we get, this is another problem here. So I'm coming from Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And I guess Berkeley had a reputation of sending all these stellar Japanese language uh. students, especially graduate. But I'm a beginner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm barely a beginner at that. I told you the... Uh, kind of situation I was in. And so they immediately put me into these advanced courses, mm -hmm. which I had no business being in. And I was begging, can you please take me out of these courses? But no, you're, you're from Berkeley. You, you know, we know how good you are. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that was bad news. Mm -hmm. um, they wouldn't let me out of those courses. I didn't learn as much as I should have. I should be able to teach Japanese by now. Um, if I had gone all the Japanese uh, study I'd done. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, still, I, I do know Japanese, but not the way I think I should. Okay. Um, I was probably spending too much time in Kobe, nighttime, <laughs> learning nighttime Japanese <laughs> in the clubs and bars uh, instead of studying. But, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. So I had such a nice time in Osaka, I decided 
I'm not going to go back uh, to my program right away. I think I want to go to Tokyo. Um, so I went to Tokyo for about two, two and a half years. I think I told my advisors that, uh, oh yeah, so I, I need to back up a little bit. So the program I went on was uh, Monbusho Shogakukin. So oh, okay. from the Ministry of Education, they gave me this big um, scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I also did some work at the same time with a professor at Hitotsubashi. Okay. And he helped me a lot. Um, we were working on some things. Uh, so I decided after Osaka Gai Dai, I would maybe try to do a little bit more study with him as long as I was in the country. Um, and at the same time, uh, do some teaching on the side. So I did a few things for Interact again. I also had some private students and then I did a little research. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, as fate would have it, that professor one day uh, was hit by a car on his bike. And it seems like it might have been a case of murder because the um, witnesses said that he had admonished someone for driving one way down the street the wrong way, mm -hmm. and the car came back around okay. and uh, pinned him against the wall. Okay. So that was, that was, and we were really close too. Um, so that was kind of a shock to me. So I was, my original plan was to go back in about a year and a half, but it turned into like two two and a half. So I went back to the U.S. Um, and at that time, I went to New York mm -hmm. uh, and stayed for about six months before starting again uh, at Berkeley, restarting my program. It was during that time I was also on the side again teaching English to uh, many Japanese. There are many Japanese companies in New York. Okay. So there was a, a fairly large uh, population and I had some students, and one of the students uh, turned out to be my now partner uh, in in this school. Okay. But okay. at at the t but at the time that you know there were no plans or anything like that. Okay. Okay. So that's how we first met. Mm. So then I went back and I started uh, restarted my program, but in the back of my mind I was like, well, do I really want to do this? But I, you know, I went through with it. But I got, I think I got fed up with the students coming in. And, you know, how come I didn't get an A on my paper? And I said, well, did you look at the grading matrix? It says you have to do this, this, and this. Did you do those things? That's why you didn't get an A. So I was really thinking, is this really what I want to do with the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. You know, teaching at a university was definitely the path I was headed on. But mm -hmm. I, I didn't know if that's what I really wanted to do. I was being more pushed that way, I think. Okay. So, one time when I came back to Japan, um, my now partner and her husband, who owned the medical clinic, uh, asked me, so um, what, are, what are your plans uh, for the future? I was like, ah, you know, I'm in school and I'll probably finish. So they said, well, we're thinking um, we're going to buy a building next to the clinic and we would like to maybe expand the clinic. Mm -hmm. But because of the uh, Japanese tax laws, we can't really do anything to it for three years. So we need to do something with this property. Mm -hmm. Would you like to start a school there? Now, what I didn't know, also, they wanted me to start the school because uh, they were hoping that we could have I, I wasn't thinking about kids, first of all. You know, I was teaching university. Mm -hmm. um, but their idea was because they wanted to attract more female physicians, uh, it was hard. It's kind of hard to do in Japan because there's no place to, you know, child care is ah. a really tough thing. So mm -hmm. they thought, hey, if we have this place where the doctors can, you know, put their children for the day, we'll do a better job of attracting some female physicians. So um, they said, look, Try it for three years, uh, because after three years, then we're able to do something with the property. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work out, no problem, fine. Um, you know, just go back to whatever you're doing. If, if not, I mean, if it does work out, then we'll talk then. Three years has now turned into 12 years. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that's how I got here now. Uh, but of course, there are many things... Uh, in between. In between. So what do you do here right now? Yeah, so at the school, 
Uh, I'm the director, which means I choose the courses that we're going to teach for. And so I should maybe explain back up. We have levels for groups, for individuals, for kids, for adults. Mm -hmm. So I'm the one who chooses all the material. I made the uh, courses. Mm -hmm. um, I train the teachers that I uh, employ. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have to do a little side work with the clinic. So whenever there's a patient that a foreign patient comes in, uh, so most of the doctors can speak English, but sometimes they need a little assistance with some of the patients. So I go over and do some translation. Mm -hmm. um, some of the medical documents I, I help translate, or I review something that is in English and make sure it corresponds to the Japanese document. Mm -hmm. um, and then outside. Uh, I also taught a course at one of the Japanese metropolitan hospitals that was in writing for medical journals. Okay. But that's a whole nother story how I got that, which we'll have to get to a little bit later. Um, so I started the school. I said, okay, we'll, we'll try. And the model was uh, basically I try to get graduate students who are here for a year or two um, because they're, they're already knowledgeable and they have to be bilingual because the program I set up, uh, I wanted it to be a poor man's international school. Okay. That was, that was my idea. Mm. And so same level of quality that you can get at the international school except, you know, for one-tenth the price. Plus, you know, the kids here in Japan, as you know, they have soccer and swimming and dance, and so their schedules are so full. One day is for English. Uh, but I didn't want a lot of play, uh, people to come here and play in English. I wanted them to really study. So mm -hmm. we were able to attract a lot of good kids. We also attracted um, Kiko Kushijo. Those are the uh, returnees, the Japanese who lived overseas, mm -hmm. and they come back. They're really good at English, and then they want to continue their English because usually after the first year, it takes a dive because of all the ijime, the bullying. Mm -hmm. And so the kids don't really want to show they can really speak English. I mean, that, wow. that's, that, that's a sad thing. That's a, that's a big problem in Japan. So the kids who do come back who have very uh, high levels of English, they lose that in about a year or two. Wow. Yeah, that, that's that. Um, and then we have a lot of the private students. Of course, some of them are medically related because just of who we are, mm -hmm. but business people and just regular people too. Um, because of COVID, you know, things, business is not like it used to be, mm -hmm. but we're still here, we're still surviving and things are okay. The teachers that we usually get, uh, for example, our last full-time, well, Part the teachers are part time for the most part because they're uh, doing some kind of uh, research or some kind of thing on the side, and they just use this maybe some beer money or whatever, and also for the experience too. Mm -hmm. Those teachers usually go on to finish. Uh, our last teacher finished uh, law school at NYU, so now she's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, the teachers we had before that were actually two sisters. Uh, they were half, although you couldn't tell. It, they didn't look Japanese at all. And <clears throat> they were famous because they came from Harvard and their mother also attended Harvard at the same time as they did. Oh, wow. I know, that, that's crazy. Uh, that is crazy. So I saw an article, they showed me an article of where the three of them uh, were enrolled in Harvard at the same time and they said some big thing about that. Oh, I think wow. one of them now, she's at one of the big international schools here. The other, I'm not sure what she's doing. I think she went to a program in Europe, uh, some advanced course. Um, so those are usually the types of uh, teachers that we attract. Right okay. now, because of COVID, uh, there's no influx. So at times when there's a gap, I take over all the teaching. Tell me about your black experience in Japan, all right? So like, what was that like? Uh, actually, it was, it was a good experience. Um, okay, okay. Uh, being black in Japan is mostly a good thing, I would mm. have to say. You get lots of attention uh, from the opposite sex, uh, that's for sure. Um, but I think being a foreigner, it's not even just being black, but being a foreigner, mm -hmm. you're going to get lots of attention. Um, but the, the thing I like about that, 
Now, Japan, as you heard, is very xenophobic. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to, for example, renting an apartment, you're going to have trouble. I had trouble each and every time. Okay. Um, while I was at Interact, they took care of that. Okay. But when I came back, I wanted to try it for myself. So I tried to rent an apartment. It took me six months before I was able to actually find a place. This is in uh, Takanawa. Mm -hmm. Now, Takanawa, the area itself is expensive, but I found a really old, cheap place. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason I was able to rent it, okay. uh, actually, because it was really old uh, and really nobody else wanted to rent it. Okay. Um, is it different? Was it different back then versus now? To rent no, it? Is because, it because recently I moved into a very nice tower mm -hmm. um, that I've, I've since moved out of, but mm -hmm. I was there for about seven years. It's called Shinagawa V Tower, mm -hmm. and they want everything. Um, they put you through a serious background check. Okay. But I would say that it wasn't because I was foreign. It was for anybody in that type of building. So I think it depends on the level. If you pay a lot, uh, you're going to get in easier. You just need to provide your credentials. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're trying to get in a sweet spot, that's where you're going to get trouble. Okay. Um, and usually they won't uh, rent to you if the place is close to the station, new, um, or desirable in some other way. Okay. Uh, so you're going to have to go through a specialized agency that specializes in landlords who are able to accept. Now, yes, it has changed a lot. And so more, and that's only because supply and demand. Okay. Um, but, it, you know, when they had high demand and limited supply, foreigners were the last on the list. Now it's totally, it's flipped. Okay. But it's still not, you know, it's not erased. So mm. I don't want to get it wrong there. It's still not wide open. <laughs> yes, yes. On this channel, we have a lot of people that come on and share. Is there anything that you feel like is missing that they haven't spoken about that you want to impart? Yeah, visas. <laughs> well, visas are not that easy, mm. uh, especially when you're working legally. Uh, <laughs> because I mean, everybody does some side hustle, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about coming here for some time, you're going to have to take care of that. Okay. Uh, it's, and it's not going to be easy. Uh, finally, I'm applying for my permanent visa mm -hmm. because even though I've been here on and off for what, over, I'd say 15, almost 20 years, mm -hmm. I've never stayed 10 years continuously. Okay. And that's what you need if you're ever going to apply for a permanent visa. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're going to need all the documentation behind that. What do I mean? You need your tax documents. And now you need your... Uh, pension documents okay. uh, as of two years ago foreigners are compelled to pay into the pension system mm -hmm. i had opted out before but now you must do so those type of things you should be mm -hmm. one other thing i must say prepare for any uh, health problems mm -hmm. now in my case two years ago i had a uh, uh, transplant stem oh. cell transplant okay so i had a form of leukemia oh chronic leukemia. And so the health system here uh, is one thing that really helped me get through that because it is not a cheap, uh, it's not a cheap condition. Okay. If you're going to get something, don't get that. <laughs> I mean, if you can, right? So what I went through, um, when it came time to get through this, now I was lucky because in Japan there are annual checkups, but although there are annual checkups in Japan. The level of the medical quality is up and down, and you have to really know uh, who you're dealing with. Mm. Um, you can't just go anywhere and expect mm. a good top-level care. It's is not it, going to happen. It's true. You, you probably know yourself. Um, so I would go back to every year I would do my uh, thing in Bangkok, Okay. Uh, which I would recommend to a lot of people. I didn't know they had such a high level of medical standard there. Okay. So... That's where I first discovered a problem. But, you know, it was for like eight to ten years I had this problem where it came time to, well, either you get this transplant or you're going to be, you know, you're going to expire. You're going to die. Uh, but the problem was I didn't have a, a, um, a donor. The donor. Mm -hmm. And especially for black Americans who are already mixed up with everything, mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard to find donors. But I got very lucky. Uh, in the beginning... 
there were, I didn't have any donors uh, okay. when they first checked. Mm -hmm. So my doctor said, okay, uh, there's a new medicine that's coming out. It, so I was very lucky that way too. I was able to use this new medicine, but it was like $30 a tablet and some days I had to take eight tablets. Okay. But it, my doctor, he was really cool here in Japan. Um, he did some paperwork for me that other doctors might not have done that allowed me to uh, get my medicine at a, a big discount. Okay. Um, so that helped me uh, through like eight years until the medicine didn't work anymore. Uh, then I really need to find it. It was like find a donor or, you know, mm -hmm. say goodbye. You know, I had a good life, so I'm not going to complain. I, I had a really good life, but nobody wants to die. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, around that time, there was a donor. I, um, he told In Japan. Me, no, so he told me, go to the U.S. Don't do it here. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> he was. He's like, I, I, I like you a lot. Um, actually, we we became very close, like mm -hmm. good friends. He's like, I'm gonna tell you, don't do it here. It's like, why? But he's the best doctor I think in Japan of all that. He's like, I'm telling you, don't do it here. Please go to the U.S. So I went to the Mayo Clinic, mm -hmm. um, okay. and I met a doctor there and explained my problem. She's like, Ah, oh, no problem. We can. You can do something with that. I said, but, you know, I didn't really have any donors last time we checked. So she went to check. She came back. She was like, you have several donors. Oh, wow. I was like, several donors? How, how is that possible? She said, it's because of your northern European genes. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> was like what? <laughs> well, thank God for that. I know. <laughs> I know. So uh, I was like, okay. At first, I, you know, I was like, what does that mean? Then, uh, mm. then it hit me. I was like, okay. Um... So it turns out I have like just average normal genes that are part of a large part of the different populations. Okay. So I was able to end up with about three viable donors. Normally, um, African Americans, you get one. Okay. And then a lot of times people will back out at the last minute. And when you get your transplant, uh, you have to undergo this very intense uh, chemo chemotherapy regime mm -hmm. where they kill everything in your body because it has to start from zero. Wow. And it's during that period, if there's nothing they can do, if you don't have some new donor to fill in that gap. And my doctor told me that has happened. Um, so, and actually in my case, my first donor backed out. Now this is before I had it. This is maybe a couple weeks before I was going in for the transplant. Mm -hmm. I get a call. They were like, um, your first donor, sorry to tell you, uh, decided not to do it. And they said, but don't worry. We have another donor. We're contacting them. And it turns out my second donor was willing to do it, and she went through with it. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to plan for those contingencies if you're coming to Japan. Now, the health system, well, it's a great health system when it comes to uh, how much you need to pay and things like that. But things could happen, so you have to be prepared, is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. And then, in my case, it, it, I told you it was something you don't want to get. It was extremely expensive to get that, even with insurance. Uh, How did you get over that period? Like, you seem like you have a really optimistic, upbeat like, what, attitude. Like, I, I was always. So even through that, you, even had, you through maintained that, it? Maintained that. Never missed a day of work. Uh, wow. Um, and everybody asked me that same thing. Shouldn't you be? And people were looking at me like dead man walking too. Mm -hmm. At some point, you know, my head, the shape, you could see like skeleton wise. Okay. I saw pictures later. I was mm -hmm. like, ooh, who is that? And that was me. I never really had bad symptoms. So yeah. that was another thing that saved me. And another thing, my doctor is really surprised. Uh, normally they say after your transplant, you can't work for six months to a year. I came back, uh, so I went there, mm -hmm. and I had my transplant May 23rd of 2018, so I have a second birthday. So okay. I'm, I'm two years old now, uh, and you really celebrate it that way. So May 23rd? May 23rd okay. is my second birthday, and it's celebrated, okay. because it's a, it really is a rebirth. Mm. And so I told my doctors there, listen, uh, I need to get back to Japan uh, because I need to go back to work, and plus... I didn't have the money to pay for two places. And when you get a transplant, you also have to have a caregiver. You need to pay for that caregiver. 
the bill it came to about eight hundred thousand oh, wow. dollars, which I did not have. But I told you, insurance paid for a lot of it, mm -hmm. okay. but not all of it. Mm -hmm. There was a gap, so I had to do uh, a GoFundMe campaign, which is still running. <laughs> I didn't, I, I, I didn't reach my goal, but you know, I maybe you got something. Yeah, yeah, I got something, mm -hmm. and a lot of my Japanese friends and colleagues, and. Uh, I was surprised because Japanese aren't known to be charitable when it comes to charities. But when it comes down to friends mm -hmm. and people close to them, they're very generous. Okay. Um, so I got helped out a lot that way. And people back in the States helped me out. And then even a few random strangers. I'm still paying down my debt, but I'm alive, so I'm not going to complain about it. Okay. And you're good now, like physically? I'm, uh, you know. Brand new. Okay, okay, good, good. Well, I mean, you'll never be 100% like you were before, but as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. Okay, okay. Um, but I told my doctors there, I need to get back. And they were like, no, no, we can't let you because my levels are really low. And you can't get on an airplane. You can't do this. I, I left uh, at the end of August is when I told them. I came back on the Friday, I came into work on that Monday, and I haven't stopped working since. So the other thing I would say, you can't be sick. Don't act sick. Just act mm -hmm. as normal. And people were treating me as normal. So my friends were treating me as a normal person. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we have this party lined up, make sure you come. So in the future, I was like, and I did. I, I came, that Friday, I came back that next Saturday. I was at my, <laughs> I was at my friend's party. Robichon, down in ABC, uh, oh eating this God. nice French dinner at his, his party. And then after that party, I went to the salsa club and got my salsa on. So, wow. you know, I just had to do what I needed to do. Just, to, you got to live. And mm -hmm. so that, I guess that would be my motto. Live every day. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I do. And that's how I was able to get through it. Okay. Wow. So tell me about the business, right? So setting up the business, getting into it. Yeah. Some insights. Well... As I told you, I was approached and uh, I said, okay, I agree to it. But there are a lot of things that you need to do. And I couldn't have done really by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, that was taken care of by my partners. Okay. But over the years, I see what's done. So, for example, like the bookkeeping, that I let my partner handle that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of tax documents you have to go through and all these other things you need to go through. So it's, I want to make sure everybody knows, the viewers know, it's easy, but it's not easy if you're going to be in something for the long haul. Mm. Uh, if you want to come in and do some like e English teaching on the side or something like that, okay, you, you'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But then you have to think about what is your future? Do you plan on being here for a while? So in my case, now that I finally will get my permanent visa, mm. uh, knock on wood, mm -hmm. um, I found out that I need... Well, you know, if you want to get a pension, and now that I'm paying into it, I was like, I want my money back. But uh, after 10 years, you, that won't get you anything. So you have to work 20 years. And I don't think I want to work 20 years. But I found out that if you are from the U.S., and this is the only country that you can do this, if you have 10 years accumulated of work there, mm -hmm. you can add it to 10 years in Japan. Okay. And then you're able to get a pension. Now, in my case... I told you I was in uh, a student for a long time, so I don't have full, it was mainly part-time work. I only work really full-time in between uh, undergraduate, undergraduate and graduate school. So I still need to do four more years of uh, full-time work in the U.S. Okay. So in order to have that, so that's what I'm saying. If you're talking about something for the long run, you're going to really have to kind of plan that out. You know, when you think about if you're going to work for a long period of time in whatever country, you have to think about how long you're going to work there and what's going to happen after you work. Mm. So if you plan on spending a lot of time in Japan, then you have to make, and now that you are required to pay into the pension system, you mm. can't opt out of it. Uh, you have to try to think about how long you will work here, uh, how long you work back wherever you came from, well, will be in the U.S. in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you have 10 years or more, you can add that on to your pension here in Japan. And then later on, you'll be able to get something. I don't know if it'll even be in existence by that time, but um, okay. you'll be able to get something. It's like, I think a lot of people don't even think that far. I'm yeah. Like, what is retirement like Exactly. And you don't necessarily have to retire in Japan. So true, true, true. in my mind, I'm like, I want to go someplace cheaper, Thailand. 
So you can Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam. Oh yes, yeah. that would be a great place to do uh, retirement. Yeah, the retirement, yeah. and you can have your pension shifted to whatever country you live in. Oh, and so you know, people need to think about, and people are doing that already. Like from the U.S., people going to Mexico, Central America. So you can decide wherever you want to have your uh, retirement. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to use it in Japan, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, it's quite expensive here. Mm. Vietnam is a place, man. A lot of people have moved there. Yeah. Um, a lot. It's, yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, well, because of you. Uh. <laughs> just like a few videos, too. I'm just like, wow. Um, <laughs> what do you like the most about Japan? And what do you like the least about Japan? Uh, I like the most the people. Mm -hmm. People are real. Um, the food. Food is fresh um, and it's delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, transportation, uh, always on time and it's clean. And then the other thing that everybody on your uh, channel says, mm -hmm. no popo. -po. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Have you ever been stopped? Mm, yeah. Here at my station, as a matter of fact, of oh. all places. Okay. Um, but I gave the person who stopped me, I gave him hell. Okay. Um, and I messed up his day because I said, why are you stopping me? And he's like, you know, we just have to stop the foreigners. So I was like, how do you know anybody in there is in the foreigner? Why are you stopping me? Mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't be able to do that back in the U.S., but here, uh, I could. And um, he's probably sorry that he stopped me because... He said foreigners? Yeah, so I so then I was like, well, oh, is she a foreign me? Because you know it could be like Chinese. True. And uh, so and I told him I was like, well, what about her? So I blew his cover right there, um, and he's like, you know, go away. I was like, because he was plain clothes. Ah. And so I was like, no, you're gonna stop me. You're gonna stop everybody. I was like, she looks foreign. So I was pointing <laughs> people out, <laughs> and uh, he left um, because you know I. I at this point, I'm not going for it. Mm. Uh, I'm not going for the okie doke. So, but I have had Japanese friends stop in Rapungi. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, wait, they stopping you, but not me. So I haven't had that problem really myself. But I did have three people from New York came to visit. Three men. Mm -hmm. um, they said they were walking in maybe Nihonbashi or someplace mm -hmm. along the street and the police stopped them. That was the first time I ever heard of something like that. So maybe because I'm going just by myself everywhere, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem. And or, the area too, Niambashi, there are like a few black Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But still. You know, yeah, I know. They yeah. shouldn't, right? But it's like their mindset is Yeah, up. but, you know, that's, I hadn't really heard of that before. Mm -hmm. So personally, I haven't had any problems like that. So those are the things I like. The things I don't like, as I told you, poor, like the apartments, the xenophobia, mm. so hard, it was so hard to rent a good place. You can mm. get, a, you can get a, a bad place, no problem. I know what you mean. You know? I, I was looking for a place at one point and it was, I saw some nice places, no foreigners. No it's the for, worst, I know. it's can the you? worst feeling, it, especially when the price is right. And yeah, like, yes, ah. that sweet spot. And you're just like, no wow, foreigners. I'm just like, y'all, I'm like, how? I can't understand, I'm like, it's money, so. Don't you want my money? It's changing slowly because yeah. of the money, but it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. It, it, that sucks, guys. Yeah. It's 2021, still ongoing. 2021, right? still going. That's the, but the thing about it is, mm. it covers every foreigner. And so I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Uh, it's not racism, it's, it's xenophobia, not racism. So just so long as you get him too, <laughs> <laughs> then I, I'm cool. I, I can deal with that. Do you think you're going to leave Japan at some point or Japan until... No, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine, like, dying here. Um, the way the U.S. is right now, I can't imagine going back there either. Um, or Thailand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, you know, after I get that, collect some money because mm. you can do things with it. Okay. And so I think... You know, that's something that everybody, including yourself, you know, what are you going to do? Now, I travel a lot. Any Pre-COVID, I was traveling. Yeah. Um, like, I'm a 1K member on, on United. So, I travel, and mm -hmm. I, I, I plan to travel some more. Yeah. Um, but probably, uh, because of the high cost of living here, 
like you say, I'll probably go someplace else and do, um, you know, Thailand could be it. Okinawa is the destination oh, yeah. too. Oh man. So, which, you know, I saw your videos in Okinawa. So Loved it, man. Never wanted to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where you yeah. might relocate to. The, the beach. Yeah. It's got everything, uh, right? Yeah. So we, we might be down there. The prices are the same though, right? It's yeah, the that, that's, the right? that's the only Japan problem. That's the only problem. Taxes and taxes. High cost of every, like transportation and the struggle is real. Yeah. So, okay, taxes. Some of the people I see on your channel talking about, yeah, I can do this and this. Okay, you can do that on the side, mm -hmm. right? But you can't maintain that. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, yeah. uh, you're going to have to, because there are certain things that you'll want to do and mm -hmm. you'll need to provide documents. So like I said, to, prov uh, to get my permanent residence visa uh, after all this time, it was so many documents I had to provide. Yeah. Um, so if you want to get legit and be entitled to say like that pension, um, then that's something you're you gonna have paperwork. to do. Paperwork. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You're gonna need the paperwork. So what's the process like? You know, permanent residency. Ah, like, yeah. is it okay. daunting? Like, what is that like? It's not daunting, but you you gotta have your ducks in the row. Um, mm. They they changed the rules just recently. Uh, they want you to show that you paid taxes within the past five years. It used to be three. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to get all your, collect all your tax records. Um, you have to collect your income statements. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have to have your hoshonin, um, you know, the person who will vouch for you, your mm -hmm. Japanese person, and they have to have a decent income. So that means... Is so, it hard to find that person? In my case, it wasn't because, okay. uh, you know, my partner, uh, their clinic, basically, they, they sponsor me. Mm -hmm. um, but after I get my thing, I, I won't really be sponsored. So that's the other thing. As a single person, you have to think about that. Now, if you're married, you know, you're, you're, you're covered. Yeah. But uh, if you're going to be single, uh, you need to think about these things. So I think that's one thing I can give you that the other guests haven't given you because they're all married and, and settled. So if you come here as a single person, you're going to remain as a single person, yeah. um, then you're going to need those things. So you need your, your relationship with your whole shoni. But you can't get your visa unless you have one anyway. So that's not hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, the other things that you need, uh, proof of the business that you're working at. So if you're working at some company, that you can get those documents from them. So it's not really that daunting, but... There's a lot of stuff you got to go around and get. Is there a language requirement? No, there's okay. not. Now, even if you become a Japanese citizen, I hear you don't need it. So I know okay. someone, he, he knows Japanese, but up to a certain level. Mm -hmm. So you do need some type of language requirement for citizenship. But if you're just talking about permanent visa, no. Okay. Uh, you just need to be able to fill out those forms or have somebody fill out those forms for you. Mm -hmm. And then wait eight to 10 months, uh, sometimes up to a year. Okay. Now, in my case, this is my third time applying. Oh, and yeah? Let, but let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. First time, I didn't know that you had to stay 10 years continuously and work 10 years continuously in the country. Mm -hmm. So I had been back and forth, and I was like, oh, easily 10 years. Cumulative uh, is like 10. Yes. Or more than 10. More than 10. Yeah. They're like, no. We need the, you need to show that you've been here for 10 years straight, been paying taxes for 10 years straight, wow. uh, been paying whatever for 10 years straight. Mm -hmm. That's number one. So the first time my application was rejected, it was because of that. They were like, mm -hmm. you don't have 10 years. Second time it was rejected was because of immigration department's uh, advice. Um, I was applying for my regular uh, five-year visa, mm -hmm. and the woman told me, well, you know, since you are applying for this visa, you will have 10 years during the period of this five years. Why don't you also apply for the permanent visa at the same time? And you may, she didn't say 100%, but she said you may get that visa. Mm -hmm. um, so I applied for the two visas at the same time, but they still rejected me. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, I mean, but she didn't say it was 100%, but mm -hmm. she said sometimes we... We do it. I guess the person who ever looked at my decided, no. So this time, everything is straight. Mm -hmm. Everything's good. So 
So what's a single life like in Japan? You know, being here, you know, people ask me like, okay, you're married, so like, it might be different. How do you feel? You know, like a bachelor uh, in Japan. Bachelor what's in Japan. Like? Um, okay. Do you get lonely? Uh, do you feel lonely or? No. Uh, matter of fact, uh, need some space sometimes. Uh, as a single, as a single person in Japan, at least a single man, mm. um, you know, if you have anything going for you, you're gonna be popular. There's no doubt about it. But at some point. You, you can't be all over the place. Mm. Uh, that, when you're young, okay. But at some point, you're going to have to, like, okay, I need to think about, you know, somebody special. Um, so probably I'm at, I'm at that stage where, all right, you know, I've seen it all. Um, it's about that time. So I would say as a single person in Japan, you can really enjoy yourself. But uh, you should try to find somebody, if you can, that... Mm. And, but don't be forced into it. Don't rush into it. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the one thing I also want to say. Don't be pressured into anything. Mm -hmm. uh, don't feel that you need to do anything. You, you have to follow your own course. And I found that in my life, if you follow your own course, you're going to be all right anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, you'll be happier too. Yeah, you'll be happier. Because mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of friends who are not happy. And they're like, don't get married. <laughs> So I don't know if I, you know, I got, and I know a lot of people who are divorced once or twice. Mm. So I see that um, even in my own family. Uh, so I'm like, I'm good. I'm good the way I am. So where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me, um, I guess, at my email address here, which mm -hmm. is right at ics.jp. I see it's tokyo.jp. Okay. All right. So guys, there you have it. This was David. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Until next time, bye for now.